This is our special edition, and he puts this together. For yeah, us. he puts this together for us, and we call it the man behind everything because it's so much more than just couch lock. Right. So we are going to interview him today, so he could tell us a little background how he got started, things of that nature. I hope you enjoy the show. And we got our main man Jig. So what up, Jig? What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? Nah, we finally got you on the other side of the camera. Yeah, uh, oh, feel funny too. Feel funny. I feel like I just should climb over and go right over. No, there. no. See, and, and then he he being nice to all of the uh, fans. He don't want to really partake in all of our famous. Right. He know what the show about, so he trying <laughs> to be cool. He ain't trying to be the puffy of the films. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But um, I said it, puffy. You do. Too I don't much. know where to start because you did so much shit and you helped so many different people out here, man. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for putting this together for me and Red, Absolutely. first of all. You, you know, that's the man behind Couch Lock. Y'all see us talking shit with all these people, but this is the guy that put that together. So, my first question to you is... Wait before you go into all the questions. Okay, go ahead. Let him introduce himself to our people. You know what I'm saying? Tell them the name, where they can find you. I know we normally do that at the end of the show, but... What up though, what up though, this is your boy Jigsaw, the Jigs, the king of the birds, film mogul is in the building, this is the I hate rappers, but um, find me Jacoby Film Everything, everything Jacoby Film or Film Mogo. make sure Simple. you are. Jacoby Film or Film Mogo. everything. And more with that Film Mogo. we gonna be getting into that in a minute, so we don't want everybody to know about that just yet, we gonna talk about the whole film mogul thing so so while you roll weed my first question to you is I want to know how you got into the movies but I know a lot of time artists they have a whole lot of hats so you were an artist right yes and how long were you an artist when did that start and what made you just say I don't want to rap no more well I probably was an artist all my life but um, when I started taking this series, it was probably 2000 and something. I can't even remember the year, but I know I had a good five-year run that I was focused nothing on music. Nothing, on, nothing uh, but music? Nothing but music. What kind of music did you do? Um, I was the gangster, the killer, and the dope dealer. And that's what you based it on. You was yeah, a trap that's what you artist. Based it on. Right. I was no, a, but you also, I, for me, knowing y'all, knowing you, you also did a few horror core. See, that was yeah. at the end. But explain horror uh, core though, because a lot of people may not know what that means. Okay, so so horror core started. I think my personal opinion started with Isha. Yeah. You know, ICP came the along wicked, all that. and took it to another level. Um, he was saying some stuff that a lot of people wouldn't couldn't relate to. You know, going against the grain of. Mm -hmm. of religion going um, outside the box yes very so icp came along took it to another level started a big juggalo fan base right right really right. juggalos are the misfits mm -hmm. of the music industry see i've never even heard that word before okay. juggalos i yeah. heard of a juggalo <laughs> juggalo juggalos. juggalo he'll be juggalo. a juggalo you'll be a juggalette Right, right. Okay, so you dress in all this weird shit, you know. Is that how they paint their face? You know, like your hair right now. That is how they wear their hair. So you hair my hair is like, fucking weird. No, I mean. <laughs> Damn! Was <laughs> it just that an insult, audience? He just <laughs> said right. my hair was I'm weird. Sorry. Is it weird? I think it's kind no, of. No, nice. I didn't say it's weird. I mean, like the the texture of it. You know, it, it looked dready, but it looked yarny. 
so it's like they mix in a lot of shit with the hair. Okay. So you, so your hairstyle color fits in. God, yes. we still love it's cute, no. is it? Nah, you good. No, because that's what make ICP ICP. Without the Juggalos and Juggalettes, it, it wouldn't be that. So what was one of the first singles? Can you remember one of your first singles you put out? And what, what, when did you know that you said, okay, this is what I'm going to do? The first single I ever put out. Damn. Think. Like first single, like recorded, professionally recorded? Recorded. After okay. you stopped playing and you said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Professionally recorded would be. I was in a crew called the Murderlistic Click. That's that gangster <laughs> killing the dope dealer still riding. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um. Murderlistic. Yes, Murderlistic Click. It was five of us. It was me, my brother Velo, my boy Goldmouth Nitty. Y'all might know him now. Goldmouth Nitty. His name is Frank Nitty, man. Um, Rallo, Scrooge. Um, producer was D Mac. Management was PT. Okay. We was moving. I mean, we had we had cassettes out. <laughs> That's a long we had time. Some of y'all don't understand. We was doing shows. We was on the radio. We had commercials on the radio, and from there, that gave me my first taste. Right. So after that, it was on and popping pop from there. I just knew what to do. But wait, I gotta say, when you just named the uh, people that was in your crew. The first thing that came to mind was the Fat Albert Gang, like them names. <laughs> Rollo. Rollo. Right. Little Boopy. Little no. Boopy. <laughs> I thought of the Fat Albert Gang. <coughs> so, <coughs> what made you venture off into the film? Well, actually, I was already into film before I started. To, okay, let me take it back. When I first heard the Fat Boys mm -hmm. run DMC, that made me like rap music. So. First, my first thing wanted to be a beatbox because right. I thought that was you know different. The thing to do. Yeah. So from that, the Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick songs came along. Then things start hearing those, my brother and them playing them. So I'm like, okay, okay, I might want to do this. But at the same time, me and my partner was sitting on the porch writing scripts. Okay. Trying at, to make it all like ten movie. or eleven. Like okay. writing movies, there. like we were sitting on the porch and then so and so went across the street. I mean, it probably wasn't put together right, right, but, right. but it was we started the start there. of what y'all was doing. So right then and there, I knew it was those two forces. So I chose music once I heard LL. Okay. LL, you know, even they call him the goat. You think he the goat? I don't think he the goat. I no. think he made great music. I think Rakim is the goat. When nope. it comes to rhyming, no, no, me, no, neither one. Him Who or do you think is the goat? The, the goat of all time. See, it's the difference of, of what you said in the goat. And what do that really mean? Yeah. The greatest of all the greatest time. The greatest of all time. The greatest of all time can be a lot of people. It can be a lot of it different people because you, you got different genres of rap one. too. One in the era that I grew up in, or just one period. See, that's what I'm saying because it's different eras now, and it's different genres. This is our degree, um, the fine goat. If they still playing your music today, today, and it came out in the eighties, early nineties, E40 it's like, is a goat. E40 like, is like this, a goat. this is what I I'm saying. Said it. E40 well, E40 is, is a goat because he is his, whole, his longevity. He's still relevant. His his um wordplay to the game. Think about it. He added a whole a whole new vocabulary, vocabulary that yep. niggas grasp to. Yep. That's hate. why I said E40 deserves a that. lifetime achievement award because. You can play E40 at any party from then till now, and it's gonna bang. That man deserve a lifetime achievement award. Make it go viral. Get it to BT or whoever you got to get it to. But back to yeah, he do song. deserve that for sure. But <laughs> great, greatest of all time with me, like I said, have to be songs they playing today. Now, every day we don't hear uh, Run DMC song, but we do hear, and when you do play it, the crowd go crazy. Um, something that I hear every day, and this is even fuck everybody up. It's a Will Smith song. So, but you, would you what look at him as the greatest? Hear him every day. Every day they're even playing that. Well, especially in the summertime, they play a summertime song. But any other time, they always you gonna hear. Especially if you listen to the pops radio stations, things of that nature, they always gonna play. Parents don't. Parents understand. don't understand. I hear and that's one of the ones that even had a, he had the TV show. 
So that's something that's relevant even to the kids this right now. Right. Like if you go that far back to what rapper is relevant today, like now, now if you ask kids right now, they're gonna say Tupac Biggie because that's as far as they can go back. Right. But if you right. go way back, then it it falls in that area. Okay, but I can dig that. Yeah. So it just well, depends on how you look at it. Well, this is uh, something I've been wanting to ask you. You make a lot of movies. What is one of your favorite projects that you came out with thus far? It could be an old project. Or it could be this. Or it could be this new thing that you got coming out. We got to, and, and explain to the people, what's your new project you got out? Well, well, let him answer the first question. What's his best one thus that, far? That I feel? Yeah. yeah, that you feel. What's your best project that you got See, I might, like a, one of my films for it, a certain reason. It might not be the whole film itself, but it just might be the way I edited it. I might not like the way the, it was, it happened, it planned out, it rolled out, but the angles and the effects and all this shit might have been dope as fuck. So just to say one that just overall that I'll be like, and this was a good movie. I just did that recently. I think that hot pack it was a good one. Yeah, that was Because yeah. it was like the, the, the whole thing. It was, I think it was real. I think it was too in your face, though. I think my films Karma are too in your face. Too, Karma was a good one. I like The Last Karma Drink because The Last Drink took it to a different level as well. Um, you know, I, I always wanted to thank you um, for putting me in that last drink because when you, when you told me the storyline, it was so relatable to me coming up because, you know, my father was an alcoholic. And I, I adapted. It was like that role was for me. You understand what I'm okay. saying? Even if it was just to to get some type of push away, like okay, you it's know, clarity. yeah, you know what if that's the right word I'm gonna use. But I appreciate that. No, no problem, no problem at all. Another question I want to ask you is: uh, Everybody don't understand what you got coming out. It's this. It's a big project to me. I feel like this is a big platform you giving everybody in the city of Detroit to be able to network with you. And what I'm talking about is Film Mogul TV. It's an app that if you're a movie producer or something like that, you can add your movie to the app and it's basically open to public. So could you tell us a little more about your Film Mogul TV and not only that, we wanted to take a toast to your success. We got to let him finish no, it. No, but we want to get that going because you know he going to only take half a sip. He don't like drinking. So okay, we try, so we're trying to you, get him going. Before we talk about that, you going to have to open that. He dropped it on his way in. So he going to have to go outside and pop it because we ain't about to do this here. <laughs> right. Hey, y'all, you start talking to him about that. I'll be right back. It okay. don't take me long to do that. See on Cops Lock? We do different things like this, y'all. But like he was saying, you know, what what project, tell the people what project that you're working on now, you know, when it's coming out, what it's about. And everybody, this is the poster right here. Detroit 80s, Killers Are Us, that he's going to talk about. Yep, Detroit 80s, Killer, Killers Are Us is basically a twist off of the St. Norman Massacre. That happened in 89. I remember that. Yeah, so it was four friends that just did one murder. Went in his house, knew the people basically. Killed everybody. Made a bad decision and fucked up their life. So I put a twist to it and made them a, a hit squad that worked for some of the biggest drug dealers in the 80s. How did you name the characters? Like, are you using actual names? How did you... Well, I put well, a twist know, on it. I know, but the audience right. know. I put a twist on it. Like, uh, like... Maserati rate, we just said Maserati slick. Okay. Reason being just because we wanted to be fictional artists. I mean fictional characters and for real life circumstances. But we're yeah, we're real, really see this is one thing that because by when I started filming I had talked with a lot of people from the actors to some of the film people to you know, even people just trying to figure out where I'm going with it. Mm -hmm. One thing that I noticed is this everybody had a question on should you use the names or not? So my okay. partner Boudin told me I should. Listening to him, I just decided not to use the actual names. And he said, gave me the reasons why. I said, okay, I can go for that. But, like I was telling him as well, 
and anybody else who made a comment about it, nobody really knows. Right. Even if you knew Maserati Rick. You don't know. You can tell me story. any motherfucking yeah. thing that switched the story up. Mm -hmm. If this man ain't here to speak for himself, mm -hmm. we're, I, I, I never seen him. I never knew him, but I'm going off of what I read, mm -hmm. what I heard, the, okay. the, the urban legends and all that. So I'm going off of that. I would not never put it in a position where it's disrespectful right. or anything of that nature. Right. If it happened, it happened. If it didn't happen, it didn't happen. I'm, I ain't going to make it up. If I'm going to make it up, it's going to make him look good. Okay. Or it's going to put him in the way well, how the shit it roll. Okay. So from that, I started handpicking my characters. I already been working with a lot of people, so. And just in case y'all know, that's didn't. the star over there, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the stars, yeah, Jackie. Jackie. Didn't know, that's Jackie. She, she, she wanted to, um, y'all remember the story like St. Aubin? It was one female. I'm a killer, Sean. She's that female. Um, then we got Super MC. Ro is the, he loved his crew, but he'd kill anybody else in a second. You know, he would never turn on his crew. You might think he would because he loose like that and you can just see it in him. But, no, he's like real genuine about his fat. Um, then his tone, played by Lil Flex, which is Jackie's yeah, brother. brother. Okay. Um, he new to the game. Both of them kind of new, but Jackie was always the one going out getting into shit. So, Lil Brother, like, shit, you can't, he's trying to be the big brother. So he there really to protect her and to, you know, step up his manhood a little bit. And then we got Boo Man. Boo Man is a, <laughs> Boo Man <laughs> a funny is character. Boo Man. Yeah, okay. Boo Man is Boo Man because, and he played by Cross. Um, Boo Man is the driver because he's in the car because he's a killer. Right. Now he don't give a he just walk in and shooting everybody. Okay. He'll but kill he people reckless before they like. Yeah. yeah, he's really reckless. He don't give a fuck. This is something that y'all really going to have to see too, yeah. folks. Yeah, so... Them are the main four characters, um, but we also, like I said, I got a, a cameo of a white boy Rick. I got a cameo of a Maserati. I got a cameo of a Butch. I'm Maserati's right hand man. Yeah, so a couple you know, cameos. I got um, Big Hurt playing Butch Jones, mm -hmm. and then I got as his right hand man, I got um, Swift from D12. Mm -hmm. So I got some nice people in there. It's a and it's a pilot. Let y'all know, 80s, first one y'all see is a pilot. It's up to the world to see if it the needs fans to, so make sure. to tell me that y'all want to see more. Mm -hmm. Make I, sure y'all go out yeah. and support it, please. Please go out and support it. So, on Film Mogo TV, Thanksgiving Day. And y'all know I don't drink champagne, but y'all like this. is a toaster. Yeah, yeah, toast to your success because you. Like I say, you help so many this other people, and I don't everything think everything nobody about. really thank take you, the time you. to appreciate. You know, this is the first time ever that. Some what champagne? Champ well, not champagne. I have sipped it before, tasted it before, okay. and that was a product. But toasting to anything that I have did. Okay. Oh, I never did that before. Again for that. Here's to you, my dude, and thank much thank success. You. I can't you. wait till we at the Grammys. I mean, at the Emmys or some shit like that. I just right. want to be able to go in your refrigerator. When he get rich, see this how you know when you real cool with somebody. You can just go in their refrigerator without asking. You they motherfucking homie. You know what I'm saying? Or when the motherfucker really made it, they still call you. I'm gonna fuck with everybody the way yeah, I and, and that's what I. I'm not sure that genuine. But, yeah, but you know not good to but without y'all, I couldn't do what I do. You when could. I'm, I'm, I'm just be with another batch of motherfuckers. <laughs> no, well, it could but be. But thank you though. We appreciate that. I appreciate. But that. how I feel. To come up from when I first started messing with y'all, or you know, filming yeah. with y'all rather, to now I can see it. And now I like when people call me, or we sitting around at any event or any place we at, and we talking about movie stuff, and they're leading the conversation, and they're geeked up about it. Now I'm feeling like okay they will feel more passionate about it. Mm -hmm. So if you're passionate about it, I know I can get the best out of that person. The best out of that and person. And they're going to bring the best. And then that shows, a lot of shows, and the people who I can see that's, that you work with, is that 
It's like you got, you know how Seth Rogen them have they same. Oh, uh, Adam, what's it the? They are, they Adam crowd. Sand, Adam, yeah, all everybody had they same film crew. They all the yeah. people that they Will, they, Will Ferrell, they Will all got Ferrell them, them all of them, and it's like you got your yeah. own little. You know, little gathering. It's uh, kind of okay. like Tyler Perry. Oh, you yeah. know how when you yeah. see his sitcom, like his yeah. movies, he It'd got some the of the same. same. You use a lot of the same people. And using the same people, what are some of the goods and bad you found out of using <laughs> the same Okay, the same people already know what they're going to bring. So you already know that it's going to be epic. You can do one take. You might do two or three. It just depends on, you know, everybody got personal lives. Somebody can be going through some stuff. Like I learned right, some yeah. stuff. On um, the set after the fact, after we recorded, uh -huh. as somebody was going through some shit, but I didn't know it until they told me. So that's that's the pros. The cons is when they get to know you and they feel they can do what they want to do, they gonna show up when they want to. Late, everybody thinking that if you star. if you say okay, we're gonna be filming <laughs> from twelve to six in the evening. They might show up at five. Tomorrow, I only got one scene, so well, I'm sure five. But you know, really, you'll never know because we might say, I might change the whole thing up and say, okay, we're gonna film all your parts since you're here today because we're gonna need this area. So, and that's something I like that you do with your movies. You uh, as far as your scripts, you give everybody their part. Yeah, but I also when we did the last drink, that was a um, what do they call it? Um, where where you don't have a script. I got it. Improv. improv. Improv, thank you. Okay, improv. Yeah, so that was an improv, okay. which was cool because you know the storyline, you know what you got to do, and it's like you put your own twist on it. Sometimes when you read from a script, you got to act out what you read, but if you can act out just by knowing. Real life. It, yeah, it, you know what I'm saying? Strength. It's a real difference with it. Yeah, it's definitely a difference. All right, so, you know, we always do something that we go, you know, our five quick. I ain't make five, Red. You got a couple? I got a couple yeah. I'm going to shoot at so you right So it's just quick. five quick questions that we ask our guests, you know, and it's no thinking about it. They just got to come off the top with it. Or did we let them think? Uh, we, uh, if we, they come on, just run it out, you know. And one, again, is going to be favorite project. Favorite project. But he already explained that. No. Well, well, you yeah, know what favorite project? Favorite project. Just looking at it, like the way it's shot, and for the most part, one or two. Yeah, I can tell one or two. One. one. What's your favorite project? One. Just that you done and you was like, this shit is all right. Ten zero zero. Oh, well, we got an alarm going off, folks. I thought, oh, it's the it's purge. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm about to stop. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite? <laughs> if you were stuck on the island, oh, well, he ain't say what's his favorite project yet. Oh, he did. ten zero zero. Ten zero zero. Yeah, he there did we go. Say it. But if you were stuck on the island and you could only have one album, what album would that be? One album. That's gonna get you through this motherfucker. Being on this island. One album. That what? you got to listen to over and we over. We're going to pick you up over. eventually. Yeah, but we until we do, you got to listen, got to, listen this bitch to one over album. and over. <laughs> one album. One album. One. And that's got to get you through. You know what it'd be? What would it be? Slick Rick. Okay. okay. Slick Rick. Reason being, he tells stories. That'll keep my mind with story. Okay. That's how I would think. If I sit back and think, I like, kill, kill, everything, then I'm be depressed and shit. You know? <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> if I think stories, I'm gonna be like, oh, when I leave here, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. This is how it is over there right now. I'm right. just gonna think. Okay, so, so yeah. Indica or Sativa? Sativa all day. I ain't no Indica couch like lazy ass me. I, go. <laughs> I like to move. I got to show. It's the second jab this nigga did. He talked about my hair. He was talking about couch <laughs> that, is that he. he Films. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut us. No, I'm just saying though, that's not me. I'm not the stuck. Right. The name right. Couch Lock is just fitting for this show. So I'm not saying, you know, so I'm gonna be Couch Lock. But I'd rather really do a sativa because I like to be on the go. Okay. You got one more? No. Okay. <laughs> well, Adidas or Converse? 
Really, I'm a Adidas man all day. But I, I rocked the fuck out of Converse because I didn't realize how comfortable they was. And then after I got over the um, subconscious of my feet looking like clown feet in the motherfuckers. Yeah, I, I rocked with them. The original Converse or the original Top 10? Original top tens all day. Cause all I'm still day. looking for them. See, of fact. We still winning with top tens on this show. And y'all want to see me something? The one with the suede around the rim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Last of the five. What's your favorite place to eat in the city? My favorite place right now that I would just be like, Psh, yeah, I'm going there. And I go there. And I go there till I get tired of it. Mm. Right now. I, Nuns. I'm a I'm a rib tip connoisseur. And nuns? man, I've been fucking with nuns since I was hey, little. Nuns all you sure? fuck too. Man, look, I didn't taste a lot of people. I'm gonna say something. Who you gonna say? I'm just gonna see which one you gonna say. Bus stops. Oh well, nigga, I ain't, you said like favorite <laughs> place to eat. You uh, ain't say you said favorite dude. Some barbecue look. though. No, but look. No, you did. Now, this you is yeah, place yeah. Place <laughs> So you I'm gonna say nuns, yeah. and I'm gonna say why. <laughs> Nuns, rib tips are tender as fuck. And that sauce, man, psh, I eat the sauce on fries with my ass and everything. But my boy Bus Stop, the only ribs I can eat with no sauce. And well, I don't I eat say, ribs, so. Man, them nigga ribs is too. Okay. I'm tired. Yeah, you I got to get some free advertisement. Yeah, no, nuns gonna look, look me up. Bus Stop and you gonna look yep. out oh, for I already know Bus Stop, stop. got me. You make sure you I'm have us a slap. She don't eat pork. So you can smoke her a couple chickens. No, I'm we gonna have I you want cook, to smoke cook corn. Uh, corn beef or grilled corn beef, whatever the fuck you make. Oh, the, I need the barbecue to taste corn that. beef. I do yeah. like lamb ribs though. Lamb ribs. So bus stop. This is the next time you see this, we letting you know that. For That's the, the only pork I eat. He gonna come cook for the. He gonna come cook for cop slot. You see that bus That's stop? Right. Yep, we put you out there. You gonna come cook for cop slot? And uh, so anything you got to ask? Him? I mean, as far as I'm concerned. We did it. Y'all yeah, see the man back Hold on. Everything. You, you also look, see, when you we a film did. mogul. Oh. oh, look, you done fucked up the church's money. God damn. Y'all see this shit. I'm just getting some fruit, Don't y'all. Don't ever give a high That's nigga no opportunity. <laughs> That's cops lock. It's you always locked. It's funny because. You just have, ruined my tablecloth. We have certain guests that we get certain shit for. Yep. So. And, and you don't. Eat nothing. You don't well, drink nothing. Well, he did request that we get some baby goat milk. And we couldn't right. find the baby find goat. The baby that was, uh, you know. No, actually, I found it. But what I didn't know is when you put baby goat milk in the refrigerator for more than three hours and turn it cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't work out. But I just want to say he did ask for an Ernie sandwich. There you go. You can't go wrong with Ernie. You cannot go wrong with Ernie. Monster. Best sandwiches, best customer service. I love Ernie. Hey, baby. Yeah, who some, loves you, baby? Who loves you, baby? You want some love spice? <laughs> <laughs> I love spice of beef. <clears throat> so, <laughs> before we go and get out of here, I want you to tell them, like you on Instagram, right? Facebook, are your internet connections that they need to log on to to check you out further? Jacoby Film, everything. Um, Spell it for him because J A C O T E Film. Um, also, the website filmmogotv.com. Also, get the app on Google Play. Download it. We update it every two weeks. I swear this nigga with fall, movies. Man. <laughs> and then we update it every week with the episodes of um, the web series that's on there. So, tune in. So, what? Besides that, what what's the new project you got coming up? Not just so the people can know. Just gonna Detroit know 80s more. Thanksgiving Day. There we go. Detroit, Detroit 80s. 80s Thanksgiving Day on Film Mogul TV. So Detroit posted. 80s make Film Mogul TV Thanksgiving Day. Make sure that y'all look. I'm in it too, so y'all make sure I'm a killer, shouty. And we got download it. the app, please. And remember, it's a pilot. If you vote on it, we we'll turn it into a series. But we also got a new series coming out. It's the first time hearing it here. District 36. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. It's a Detroit cop movie. There Just like go. NYPD, all that shit. We go. about to bring y'all some shit like that. Called District 36. Or is it called 36 District? 
Hey, so you know, it's one you, of them. If you do that, you gonna need a, a sound like Law and Order. You know how Law and Order every time like doom, doom. <laughs> So we gonna have to think of a sound right. that you gonna need. That's like the Law and Order shit. Look, I swear to God, that got a sound right there. <laughs> that ain't the sound. That's irritating AF. And we gonna um, also y'all see a lot of the cast in there. They're not probably going to be. It's probably going to be. You probably see one or two as the main cast. But it's going. To, they're definitely going to be in there as as either a criminal, <laughs> a, a witness, a lawyer, something. But they'll be definitely in there. But once again, sure, getting that cameo on. We finna get out of here, y'all. Yes. Make sure y'all tune in the couch lot. Thanks for tuning in, season and two, y'all. Here's your girl Redbone. It's my man Jigsaw. And I'm Ill Will. What y'all just gonna leave me out to oh, toast? You, you was talking. What type of fuck you shit is that? You was talking. But we out of here, y'all. We out. Another season. I don't see why y'all spend your money on this shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>